Okay, this is your last video for 8.1. This is 8.1 part 3, and we're going to be looking at a couple things. But the first thing we're going to look at is what the heck does the inverse tangent function look like? So just like sine and cosine, we have to restrict this to make it one-to-one -one because it will flunk a horizontal line test. You know, like for instance, if y equals 1, it hits, you know, more than once. So that's a problem. So what we have to do is we have to restrict it. So we're going to restrict this, and because uh, tangent has some nice, pretty vertical asymptotes there, it restricts itself pretty nicely. Um, remember, restriction, we have to have one quadrant where inverse tangent is positive and one quadrant where it's negative. So if we look at this, this is quadrant number one. All the values are above the x-axis, so they're positive. And then in quadrant 4 here, on the other side, they're below the x-axis, so their, their quantities are negative. Okay, so we've restricted it down. And now what we're going to do is write up what the domain and the range looks like. So the domain of the restricted tangent graph is going to be uh, negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. And we can't include those values because that's where the asymptotes are. So just be careful. And the range. The range is going to be negative infinity to positive infinity. So you guys are going to actually like inverse tangent because remember, whatever the domain is becomes the range, and whatever the range is becomes the domain. So the domain for the inverse tangent function is actually negative infinity to positive infinity. So we don't have to check to see if it's in the domain. So your values all are good. But you have to make sure that your answer is going to be in either quadrant number four if the value is negative and quadrant number one if the value is positive. Okay. All right, I already wrote that information out. Inverse tangent. So the domain, once again, we saw that the range for the restricted tangent graph was negative infinity to positive infinity. That is now our domain. And our range for inverse tangent is going to be from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2, but it does not include those two values, because remember, those are at where the uh, vertical asymptotes are. Okay, so we can plug this in again. Negative infinity to positive infinity, and then the range is negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. So once again, if you get a negative value, it's going to be in quadrant 4. Your angle needs to be placed into quadrant 4. And if you get a positive value, you have to place your answer in quadrant number 1. Find the exact value of part A, inverse tangent at 1. So, is 1 in the domain? The answer is yes. And in fact, the domain is negative infinity to positive infinity, so I'm good to go. All right. So the next question is, is it positive or negative? The 1 is positive, so I know my answer has to be in quadrant 1, because my range is negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. Okay, since it's positive, I want a quadrant 1 angle. All right. So once again, you rely on your 30, 60, 90, or 45, 45, 90 triangles. And I'm drawing up 45, 45, and the reason why I'm doing that is because I know the legs are both 1. And this is square root of 2. Tangent, by definition, is opposite over adjacent. So what angle fits the bill? So tangent, we have 1 over 1. Opposite over adjacent, that's 45 degrees, and it doesn't matter which angle you look at, because it'll work for both. Okay, so that works. 45 degrees in radians is pi over 4. So the answer, what is the inverse tangent of the value 1? The answer is going to be the angle pi over 4. So once again, inverse tangent, or inverse any function, what angle do I get when I have this value? Okay, so let's look at this next one. So the first thing I have to do because it's inverse tangent of negative radical 3 is 
negative radical 3 in my domain? And the answer is yes. Once again, the domain for inverse tangent is negative infinity to positive infinity. So yeah, it's good. Next, the value is negative. So I know I have to have a quadrant for angle y because the range is negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. Negative values go into quadrant number 4. So I know I have to have a angle, negative angle as my answer. Okay, next, I'm going to rewrite negative radical 3 as negative radical 3 over 1. Remember, tangent is opposite over adjacent. The only triangle that I know of that has a radical 3 is the 30, 60, 90 triangle. So I'm going to go ahead and draw in the legs here. So once again, I'm looking at radical 3 over radical 1, opposite over adjacent. The only one that works is 60 degrees. 60 degrees is pi over 3. But remember, I need, because this is a negative value, I need to put that in quadrant 4. So I go ahead and attach a negative sign, and that is my answer. So I can say inverse tangent of negative radical 3 equals the angle negative pi over 3. Okay, anybody have any questions? If you do, just email me. Uh, moving on. Whenever the wording in the question asks you to find the exact value, once again, and I've said this over and over again, you do not use a calculator, okay? All right, you have to rely upon your unit circle and your 30, 60, 90, and 45, 45, 90 triangles. So let's look at composite functions. All right, so we've seen sine and cosine, and we know that the first one's a problem child. The reason why is because you have regular tangent inside or the in nested function and outside of that is inverse tangent. So we have to make sure that my angles must be in quadrant 4 or quadrant number 1. If they are not, if they're in quadrant 2 or quadrant 3, I let me just write if in quadrant 2 or quadrant 3, I must move my angle. Okay, so let's figure that out really quick. All students take calc. Okay. In quadrant 2, tangent is negative. So if I'm in quadrant 2, I got to move that to quadrant 4. Because remember, quadrant 4 is where my negative angles belong with inverse tangent. If I'm in quadrant 3, tangent is positive. So I have to move my quadrant 3 angle to quadrant number 1. Okay, so just note that because you can't leave them there. The reason why is because it has a restricted range. My answers must fall in that range. Okay, for the second one... I just have to check x, but with tangent, x can be from negative infinity to positive infinity, so you never have to worry about this. Your answer is just going to be x when inverse tangent and tangent cancel each other. Okay, so let's move on. All right, find the exact value of any of the composite function. Don't use a calculator. All right, so the embedded function is inverse tangent, so we have a value of 14. 14 is in the domain, which is negative infinity to positive infinity, so that's okay. So I'm at the point where I can just cancel inverse tangent with tangent, and I'm left with just 14. Okay, done. So for objective 3, they're asking you to find the inverse function of a trig function. So this is something a little bit new. I don't know if you remember from college algebra... They asked you to write an inverse function given a regular function. So what you did was you replaced x with y and your y value with x. And what we were doing was making the domain the range, just like we saw graphically earlier with these trig functions, and we made the range the domain. Okay? So this next example asks you to find the inverse function of function f. 
Find the range in the domain. Okay, so the function says f of x equals negative 5 cosine at 3x when x is a value between 0 and pi over 3. I wrote down this function here so that we can work it out. Uh, we're going to find the inverse function. So f of x, by the way, is a fancy way of saying y. Remember, that is your range. So y equals negative 5 cosine of 3x. That's my regular function. Okay, so if I want to make it an inverse function, I'm going to replace y with x and x with y. Okay, so let me go ahead and do that. Let's get some colors going on here. Okay, so y becomes x I'm going to leave the negative 5 alone, the cosine alone, and x becomes y. Okay, so I made those in red to really point out what I'm doing. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to solve for y. Okay, I'm going to solve for y. Okay, so what I need to do is basically move everything off of the left hand side or the right hand side and move it to the left. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to divide everything by negative 5. And when I do that, the negative 5s cancel each other, and I get negative x over 5 equals cosine of 3y. Okay, next I want to get rid of cosine. So to get rid of cosine, I have to take the inverse cosine. That's what allows me to solve this. That's why we had to do those functions earlier, by the way. Okay, so what happens is these two cancel each other out, and I'm left with 3y equals inverse cosine and negative x over 5. The last step is I got to divide both sides by 3 to get y by itself. So I'm going to divide this side by 3, and what I do to one side, I have to do the other. This becomes 1. Uh, so if you want to write it up nicely, you can do this. You can say it's multiplied by 1 third inverse cosine of negative x over 5. And this is your answer. So that's your inverse function. So once you solve for y, after replacing x with y and y with x, it'll give you uh, what the inverse function is. All right. Last page of 8.1, solving inverse trig functions. The goal is still the same. We've got to get the variable isolated on one side of the equation, everything else on the other. So we start out with 3 inverse sine of x equals pi. I want to get x by itself, so isolate x. How do I do that? I divide by 3 first. So inverse sine of x equals pi over 3. Now I have to get rid of the inverse sine. So the inverse function of inverse sine is sine. And what I do to one side, I have to do to the other. So these two cancel each other out, and I have x equals sine of pi over 3, which is 60 degrees. Sine at 60 degrees is, I'll let you guys think about that a moment, radical 3 over 2. So that is my answer, radical 3 over 2. Next, find the exact solution of the equation. 30 sine inverse of x equals 5 pi. Okay, first thing I do is I want to get uh, ice, uh, I, sorry, x isolated. Okay, so I'm going to divide off by 30. So I get inverse sine of x equals 5 over 30. Uh, that reduces down, by the way, to pi over 6. So inverse sine of x equals pi over 6. Now to get rid of inverse sine, I have to take sine. That's its inverse function. And when I do that, I have to do it to both sides. So inverse sine and sine cancel each other. I have x left. 
and it equals sine at pi over 6. Pi over 6 is 30 degrees. Sine of 30 degrees equals 1 half. Okay, so that's how you do those problems. All right, so really quickly, uh, I'm just going to write the domain and ranges of all the truth functions we went over. Inverse sine of x, domain, negative 1 to 1. My range, negative pi over 4 to pi over 4. That places angles in quadrant 4 and quadrant 1. So if the value is negative, it goes in quadrant 4. If it's positive, it goes in quadrant 1. Okay, cosine inverse. Domain is negative 1 to 1. The range is 0 to pi. Quadrant 1, if the values are positive. Quadrant 2, if the values are negative. Tangent inverse. Domain is the one I like because it's negative infinity to positive infinity. I don't have to check any of the values. And the range is negative pi over 2, not including that, to pi over 2 and not including that endpoint. Okay? So once again, you have quadrant 4. If the values are negative, you have to place them there. And quadrant 1, if the values are positive. Okay, so that's just a quick review. You have to know these. All right, so make yourself flashcards. Um, and by the way, the last example we just went over will be on the, something like it will be on the test. So make sure you know those like the back of your hand. Uh, that makes your life much easier in, in knowing how to understand these inverse functions. All right, that's it.